Hey, True Believers, England Teen here. Now, here is a style of video I have not done in a long time, and I'm taking advantage of the fact that YouTube is throttling my channel and crushing it to do one because I stopped doing the independent comic book reviews because it got low views, but right now everything is. Everything is. So I'm putting this out here. Do you guys want to see this kind of thing? If so, share, share, share. If you like this, please share. Get it out there so more and more people can see it. What this is, is just like the Marvel vs. DC without the company uh, competition. I'm not doing, ooh, Image had 10 in the countdown this week because I can't read every independent comic book out there to do that. However, I did buy and read a shit ton of comic books from independent companies, read them, reviewed them. These are 40-second. Are they good? Are they bad? These are not in-depth reviews, just something to give you an idea of what's decent and maybe you could pick it up or what I thought was garbage and maybe you uh, should avoid. You, of course, use your own judgment. I mean, it, you know, everybody's got their own opinions, right? And I can only talk about what mine are. Uh, it's the same thing. One stars are horrible. Two stars are bad. Three stars are, even, are average. Four stars are good and five stars are excellent. And I, I do actually have five stars. I haven't read a five-star book from Marvel or DC in a long time. So, hey, go Independence, right? Um, now, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of comic book covers going by you right now. Yes, these are the books that are going to be talked about here in just a few minutes. And uh, before we do that, I want to just remind you that please help this channel out. YouTube has been throttling the views. You can even watch it as a video will hit two, three, maybe 400, and then it will not have a significant change for hours. They just won't allow it. You'll even see it in the comment section where they won't allow comments for hours on this either. So go on over to Ko-Fi and you can even commission a video. Link's in the description below. You're going to see some commission videos tomorrow and the next day. But you know what? This is me whining like a little petulant child. Let's get this party started. The one-star books are horrible. These should be avoided at all costs. Well, don't kill anybody. Clue number two. So I kind of enjoyed the first issue i was a big fan of first miniseries that idw did this book i picked up and the art was so incredibly bad i couldn't finish it now i've always said a good story can save bad art but if it's just so distractingly bad i i'm sorry it was just you know what this this doesn't if they're not gonna put in the effort why should i Exciting comics number one. I have to admit, I saw the cover. I got a blonde phantom feel from the golden age. I'm like, yes, I want to read this. Just from the cover alone, I was I was brought in, man. It, it, it just sucked me right on in. And then I opened the book and I started reading it. And the dialogue on this was like, oh, your business is done, but my business is good. But your business is, it's horrible dialogue all the way through the book. I don't think I'm going to be picking up issue number two. Grim Fairy Tales 2019 Swimsuit Special. The worst thing about reviewing this is it means I'm admitting that I bought this. The worst part of this book, though, is that there's a 15-page story before the cheesecake shots. And it has nothing to do with anything. It's not like, oh, and this is the story that gets us to the island. It gets everybody in the thing. Okay, fine. Yeah, I got that. No! It's like, here's a story, cut off, now the cheesecake shots. And I'm sorry, gang, but in all honesty, I could say get your porn elsewhere, but I did uh, I did get this book. But I got it so I could do the review, and of course, this has got to have a bad comic beat down to it. Calamity Kate comes into Los Angeles. She's a monster hunter. There's a lot of monsters in Los Angeles. Apparently... This is a job that should pay enough for her to get her own place, but the whole premise is she's trying to get uh, her sister to agree to let her stay with her. It's kind of dumb. It, it's a monster hunting slice of life comic book. I, I wish I could say better things, but unfortunately, no, not this time. Second Coming! All right, we heard this was going to be out. It's by Ahoy Comics, and generally they put out good books, but they can't win them all. In this case, we're told a little bit about, of course, stuff that happened in the Bible. It follows through. Here's the rules. Here's this and that. And it does so with a very tongue-in-cheek, I'm-trying-to-be-edgy style of writing. 
Then Jesus comes along and says, well, let me try. He goes down, comes back 32 years later. God mocks him. I found that part funny because like, ha, you only lasted 32 years. And uh, then superheroes arrive and God says, hey, if you go down and be like these guys, maybe they'll worship us a little bit more. And so he does. And overall, this book, unfortunately, is just trying to be edgy, but there's no real edge. And unfortunately, if you, you do that, it just makes the whole thing dull and that's what this book is it's just boring uh making fun of religion is a pastime for people we've heard it we've seen it we've done it eh not impressed horror comics number one that's all right it wasn't bad. I've read better horror comics. This isn't going for horror. Like, there's no atmosphere to it. It's straight up, let me show you some gore. Let me try to shock you with a twist ending. Which I was like, okay, that's I kind of saw it coming. Um, because at the beginning, everybody's praising his ice cream. So what's the secret ingredient as he's killing this person at the end? So, yeah, guess where that's going. Mm, it's okay. Bell, The Oath of Thorns, number one. I was a bigger fan of the first one than I am of this one. And mainly because she, in this book, talks about herself to herself a lot. Every page that covers up what is looks like decent art is just her talking about, well, I do this, and I do that, and this is me, and I am blah, blah, and I, 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 I. And it really just does cover up what looks like a pretty decent action scene. And, and for most of this book, it's action. Unfortunately, the information dump isn't always pertinent information. So while there's a great story to be had here, they just haven't found it yet. Archie 704. So Archie and Sabrina have been dating in secret, and Betty and Veronica know that he's dating someone, wants to find out who, so they set him up to be a bachelor in an auction to help the destitute. So, of course, that brings out all sorts of tension. It's uh, it's not yet Riverdale quality, but I kind of see it going in that direction, and that's not a that's not good to me. I kind of like the lighthearted stories more than this kind of thing, more than the drama. If I want drama, I'll read Twitter. Killer Groove number two is all right. I wish I could say more about it. I want to say more about it. I want to talk about how great it is. There are some good stories in here. There's a couple of storylines they follow. One is better than the other. The one with the hippie that finds out he's a really good killer. My dad said something along those lines because he had to go to Vietnam. And he's like, I never knew I would be good at that. Um, so that kind of resonates. But overall, this is a very middle of the road book. And I don't see myself continuing it. Zorro Sacrilege, number one. So I thought this was going to be a demon story because the last one was. Um, he is in a monastery. He's staying there for a while. And uh, you find out that the monastery is a bit corrupt. I do have to say this is a slow burn. It, gets a long t it takes a long time to get started. I didn't care for that very much. I do like the character of Zorro. I just think they needed to tighten the script on this particular issue. Because it really did kill the pacing. Dick Tracy Forever, number two. It's got some good stories. I did like the first one, The Damned Watch. I like anything with Prune Face in it. Um, I, I like anything with his bizarre villains. At one point, we're dealing with a guy who's a piece of broccoli. So, Dick Tracy for you, ladies and gentlemen. It's an anthology book, though. So, some stories are better than others. And in the end, it kind of all averages itself out. I would prefer a Dick Tracy comic with one straight narrative. Fallen World, number one, from Valiant Comics. All right, I like Rye. Not the bread, but the comic book. I've always enjoyed that, and I was a little bit sad to watch it kind of fall the way to, to, to the wayside while Bloodshot took over. I like Bloodshot, too, but give me a Dan Abnett Rye story like this one, and I'm all aglow. And, yeah, that's what we get here. It's, got, it's a lot deeper than you would think it is. There's a ton of action. It's just the kind of story that I like to read these days. <laughs> there's even, uh, and here's the important part, there's character through action as well, which is something that people do not seem to be able to do too well in comic books today. Jughead the Hunger versus Vampironica. You never want your audience to be ahead of the story because then they play catch up and it gets boring. So in this case, 
we have Jughead having a dream that Vampironica and the Archie gang is eating him because they're all vampires. And then most of the book is spent debating whether vampires exist, which we obviously know they do because of Vampironica. So we're waiting for the characters to catch up to us. And it, it's a good book. It's an okay book, but it could have been better if they focused the story somewhere else. Road of Bones number two is as good as the first issue, but it's in danger because the first issue gave you a good sense of dread. This one is a one more damn thing kind of comic book where, oh, now we're facing this trial. Now we're facing that trial. Instead of creating a sense of uh, desperation, it's just showing you, okay, well, now we got to jump this crevice. Now we have to deal with low food. It's not creating that sense of uh, dread that the first issue had. Isola, number eight. Now, Isola continues to be just a, a really good story, and I enjoy it quite a bit. I even bought the trade to the first part. Um, it is starting to get a little repetitive, though, where it's like it's kind of like Walking Dead, you know, where they went to a place, they felt safe, then somebody or something came along, destroyed that place, so they had to go find another place. Well, this one is they travel, they meet someone that someone seems to be really nice until you find out that that someone is actually not so nice. Yeah, they're doing that same story here as well. It's still good. It's just I'm starting to notice the patterns. Excellence number two. So Spencer Dale is still going through his trials for the Aegis and ends up ticking off a lot of people, including the overseer, the head of this whole magic user organization that we've been watching so far. I'm I'm liking the book. Now, granted, there's a little bit of teen angst that I I kind of roll my eyes up at these days. I'm just a little bit too old for it. But overall, this is one you should be following. The Road of Bones number one does a really good job of creating a sense of dread in the atmosphere this is about three guys who are in a russian gulag and they want to escape and this whole issue is basically showing exactly how bad it is in the gulag and that sets up why they would go and face the uh, cold of siberia in order to get away from it and i think it does an excellent job at doing what it needs to do Transformers versus Ghost or Transformers and Ghostbusters, I guess. But oh my gosh, this was so much fun. So it starts off on Cybertron. I'm not a big Transformers fan, so excuse me. But it starts off on Cybertron, and we find out that the, the destruction of Cybertron is helped out by a Gozer, the Gozerian Transformer. And then, of course, the uh, Autobots and the Decepticons are uh, out to find someplace new, and they end up on Earth where the Ghostbusters, there's a Transformer spirit at one point, and the Ghostbusters catch it when it was supposed to be warning the Earth and warning the Transformers on Earth that something bad is coming. <laughs> anyway, it's a fun book. Seriously, you should check this out. Postal Deliverance number one, as I read it, I discovered this is like chapter two of the Postal storyline, and it doesn't feel like it. You get all the information right up front. Usually, I got to say, I'm not a fan of uh, ugly stories about ugly people, but if they can make you empathize with that ugly person, with the villain in this case, they can make a really good story out of it, and they do that here as this uh, hitman loses his family, and then he searches for uh, just his place in life and he finds a, a community that uh he decides he's gonna take over it's a really interesting book and a lot of fun jughead and the time police number one uh so jughead loses a pie contest to the point where everyone gets sick and he gets banned for life from a pie eating contest and decides that he needs to create a time machine and go back in time and stop him from creating a pie so poorly uh, it's a fun book. You heard the premise. That's that's all I can tell you. It's an Archie and Jughead the way that Archie and Jughead should be with all sorts of ridiculousness thrown in. If you like the Archies, and I mean by that, by that I mean classic Archies, you're going to enjoy this book. The Walking Dead, number 193. I did a full review on it, so please check that out. I have to say I enjoyed it. However, I think there's a lot more story to be told to get to the place where they are in this particular issue. This is the future. We see 
basically the legacy of Rick Grimes through the eyes of uh, an older Carl Grimes. That's him right here. Uh, very well written. Of course, the art is the same as it's always been, and I, I think that's pretty good as well. Uh, like I said, it's a good book. I just don't think now was the time, but then again, I'm not Robert Kirkman. Planet of the Nerds, number three, is still a fun and funny book about three displaced 1980s movie jocks. I mean, granted, they're not from the movies in the book, but they are based on the movie jocks that just beat up nerds every time they see them. In this case, they try to go to their number one target's cryogenic co uh, company, and they're amazed to find out that he's very successful and that their bullying tactics no longer work. You got to check this book out. It is just tons of fun. Sabrina the Teenage Witch number two. So the only reason why this isn't as good as the first issue is because the first issue, I believe, was more character driven, world building. It, it really wanted to drag you. This is more plot driven. This issue was. And while it's still exciting and it's a lot of fun and I can recommend it. I just was missing those character moments. I'm still all in for the series so far. I just hope it keeps up the quality. Excellence number one. Oh yeah, this came to my radar thanks to JSG. And I figured, okay, let's pick it up because he's saying its praises pretty loudly. Now, I liked it. Not quite as much as he did, but I think it's a pretty good book and it's definitely worth the money. Uh, about a kid who is uh, in a magical family who is not as adept as the rest of them, but he does have to go through the trials. And uh, that's the first issue. A lot of fun. You should be picking this one up. Turok number one. So I just imagine someone at Dynamite said, you know, Turok is in the public domain, right? If we just design them in our own way, we could use every story right there and uh, make our own comic. So it seems like they did, and they said, hey, I think that will be awesome, and they were right. As a matter of fact, if you're not going to read the original from the 1950s, this is a great substitute. Critical Role, Vox Machina Origins number one. I'm not very familiar with Critical Role and Vax Machina Origins or any of this. I have to say that's to my detriment. Reading this book in just a few pages... I got a sense of family from these characters. These are characters I want to watch, I want to hang out with. I was very impressed. We uh, are basically following a Dungeons & Dragons group that uh, that one of them has a bad dream, uh, uh, says father, and then walks out, and the rest of them, for the rest of the book, are trying to find them. But before we do that, there's just a few pages of dialogue between them as they sit at a tavern, and... It is some of the best writing I've read in a long time as far as characterization is concerned. What a great book. I am in for the long haul on this one. Planet of the Nerds, number two. Uh, so they're at a comic book convention, and right away the big jock nerd decides he's going to start beating the crap out of all the silly-looking comic go convention goers and uh, gets themselves in trouble. They run away, of course, and finally figure out, holy crap, we're in the future. It's This is a fun book, gang. You you really should be picking this up. It does play off the 80s nostalgia, and there's a bit of fish-out-of-the-water things where it's like, what the hell? Their phones are portable? And uh, stuff like that. It, it really is nothing to be taken serious, but it sure is a lot of fun. Sabrina the Teenage Witch number one. It's no surprise that I am a fan of Archie Comics. The big surprise here was that I'm a really big fan of uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch number one. I didn't think it was going to be this good. And uh, I'm, I, I watched the Netflix show and I'm like, eh, I'm not inspired to watch the next seasons and all that kind of stuff. But this book was just a lot of fun. It really did go into world building as well as... Uh, just character building and i that is a good balance there gang uh, we learn all the characters not just her but we get to know who and what the motivations are for the people around her i'm quite taken with this book middle west is one of the better fairy tale books that we're getting out there in this case we've got this huge cyclone that's been around since the beginning and we finally find the origin and it's a little kid it's a little kid who throws a tantrum to the most extreme uh, endings. And when he comes down, he's looking for help from the townspeople, of course. He just caused all sorts of death and destruction, so they don't want to help him, which leads our protagonists, our heroes, to follow after him to see if he's okay. It's 
really a good heartfelt story. Mid Middle West is an incredibly impressive book by Scotty Young, and I cannot recommend it high enough. Canto. All right, this is a book about a slave who is in a colony that's not allowed to have names because they are slaves, and he just kind of rises up to be an inspiration to his own people. It's one of those stories, and it works. I was surprised because when I opened it, I'm like, ah, I don't know if I want to do this. It doesn't look all that great. The art, although, kind of grew on me, and so did the story. I really like this book. Usagi Yojimbo, number one. Now, if you want complete honesty, pound for pound, this is one of the best books ever made. I mean, like, there's hardly a weak issue throughout its entire history. This story is mostly about uh, Japanese culture, the puppet shows and so forth, all at the backdrop of demons coming to a small town that Yojimbo has to fight. So, yeah, brilliant on them. It's a very intelligently written comic book. So there you go, gang. That's my little countdown of independent comic books that I've read this week. <laughs> Actually, it was a couple of weeks worth of independent comic books. Um, I'm trying to get caught up. Uh, so anyway, what do you think? Have you read these books? Uh, did you like them? Did you hate them? And yes, by the way, these are past books as well as some that were released this week as well. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Also, is there anything in particular that you would like me to check out? By all means, let me know that as well. Uh, don't forget to click like and share, share, share. Get word about, out about this channel. I'm trying to rebuild because YouTube is throttling it. And uh, by all means, please, uh, if you haven't done it already, click subscribe. More importantly, make sure your notifications are on and hit that notification bell. Cool things happen around these parts. I don't want you to miss anything. You shouldn't miss anything. Cool things. All right, don't forget to go on over to uh, Patreon or to Ko-Fi. Drop a dollar in the till and help support the channel. Help us make videos for you. And uh, you could go on to Ko-Fi and commission your own video. A few people have done that. You're going to see some commission videos come out on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday as well. So it's going to be awesome stuff. And you can control this channel. And isn't that always fun? So anyway, I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers... Thank you very, very much for watching.